Yeah, I, I just got to the governor's office for the first time this morning. And uh, the first thing I did was uh, put a picture that I had in the back of the mayor's office in Charlotte for over uh, 14 years. And the picture was of my dad sitting behind the mayor's desk um, that I took the morning after I was elected mayor in 1995. Uh, my dad passed away about a week and a half later. And that picture was very difficult to take out of the mayor's office after serving 14 years. But um, I unpacked it today and a picture of my mom and dad uh, right there in the mayor's office is uh, now in the governor's office and it's quite a quite a thrill for me to do just that and uh, real honor because they've been in my heart uh, ever since the, during this whole process and will be throughout the rest of the week um, as I said during the swearing-in ceremony over the weekend my goal was not to just get a title my goal was to lead and to govern and to serve with a purpose. And today we're continuing that work and we continue to make some uh, very important announcements and also get some work done. I'm proud to announce uh, that this morning I signed my first executive order at the state uh, capitol building. My first order actually rescinds the judicial nominating commission. We're going back to the original constitutional authority granted to the governor giving the governor the authority to appoint people to the vacancies on the bench. With the signing of this order, I intend to appoint individuals with the highest quality of temperament, education, experience, ability, and integrity who will impartially interpret the laws and administer justice. Copies of the executive order will be distributed to you after the press conference from my staff. This morning, I also held my first cabinet meeting uh, at the at the governor's mansion where we got my leadership team to gather together to discuss laying the ground mark groundwork um, for transforming our government and instituting the highest standards of ethics teamwork and customer service going forward we discussed many of the challenges we are inheriting in our departments and agencies and we also discuss future steps that we need to take to fix the broken government and broken government we have here in North Carolina. We have discovered several things during the transition process, especially with regards to operation, that do cause me great concern. We just received the recent audit of our state's IT service consolidation efforts that conduct, were, were conducted by Beth Wood, someone I've established a very good relationship with. In fact, I've encouraged her to do more audits of the executive branch so we can find out what is broken. But one thing that audit did reveal to me is that our IS system is broken and we have to fix it as quick as possible. And I'd like to thank Beth Wood for doing her job and I encourage her to continue to do her job because the sooner we find out about uh, some of the things that are broken, the quicker we can fix them. And right now, some of my cabinet secretaries are finding more things out every day as they arrive in their offices. Uh, my biggest concerns right now regarding some of the operational issues that uh, we're finding out about and we're finding out more serious problems. One is um, the IT systems are broken in almost every department in which I've talked to my cabinet secretaries. My major concern right now is especially the IT work in health and human services. Aldona Voss, our Secretary of Health and Human Services, will give more updates on that. My biggest concern at this point in time is they're supposed to have a new rollout of a new IS system called the MMIS, uh, and it could have uh, major ramifications on food stamp and Medicaid operations in state government. If this uh, new system is not uh, implemented the way it was initially designed, then uh, we're going to have some major issues in July regarding um, our citizens getting the needed uh, services from state government. This is probably right now our number one operational issue. In fact, we've already um, looked at hiring some contract people out for some emergency services to help the IT and health and human services. And we're trying to also look at the budget to see where we can get that money. And I'll be talking about that in a few minutes also. The second issue that uh, almost every one of my cabinet secretaries have brought up in addition to IS is just frankly the maintenance and the upkeep of government properties throughout North Carolina, including right here in Raleigh. I've seen that for myself. In fact, taking a tour around 
just the governor's mansion. Outside the governor's mansion, I was walking with the person who's worked there many times, and I was pointing out houses that are right near the governor's mansion. And I go, who owns that house? And they said, the state government. Who owns that house? The state government. Who owns that house? The state government. And almost every one of these houses was in total disrepair, and some of these houses were actually um, being used in state government operations. Um, I'm, I'm concerned, frankly, that I'm going to get a call from the Raleigh mayor and ask that uh, you clean up the state property within the city of Charlotte. Being, uh, being in, I'm sorry, in the city of Raleigh. And uh, being a former mayor, that causes me great concern that the state uh, might not be taking care of their existing properties, which actually impact the quality of life here in this beautiful, beautiful city. But the fact of the matter is, those, those are just small examples that I've seen. Um, we're very concerned about some of the maintenance, um, the inefficiencies, the scattering of buildings, the number of leases that we're seeing. We're getting feedback from employees that they'd rather be in leased buildings because they know it's better taken care of than buildings owned by state government. That's not a good sign. And these are things we need to correct because it could be impacting not only the quality of life for the government employees, but also the the direct operations of state government. I'm also concerned about the maintenance of the buildings because the longer it, uh, it takes to uh, maintain and fix these buildings, the more expensive it's going to get for the taxpayers. And frankly, I've seen some buildings where, including the Albemarle building right behind us, where I've been working for the past four weeks, where uh, much of that building is in total disrepair. And the longer it's kept that way, the more it's exp expensive it's going to take and the more inefficient the operations will be. Uh, the third immediate issue that we're going to take uh, deal with regarding some operational issues across the state uh, and hearing from my cabinet is an uh, immediate issue regarding Mecklenburg County, of all things, and that's regarding the Medicaid oversight. Uh, Secretary Aldona Voss had a conference call today with the county elected officials and county managers uh, this, early this morning. Uh, talking about the serious issue of the Medicaid oversight being run right now by Mecklenburg County and the transfer of that over to another organization. The Secretary will give more updates on that. Uh, it is something that the Purdue administration stated just several weeks ago with regards to their ability to um, have Medicaid oversight. This has ramifications in the millions of dollars and also impacts uh, some employees' uh, current jobs in the Mecklenburg County area, but more than anything, we're concerned about the services being provided to our constituents, uh, not only in Mecklenburg County, but throughout the state of North Carolina. There are some long-term ramifications in this, too, because we do want competition regarding how many agencies we have in the several regions that we have across the state, and we need to make sure that some agencies actually hold up and do their job. And the more that they are doing that, the more choices we have as consumers. Um, the fourth issue I want to briefly talk about that came up in our uh, budget meeting, uh, in our um, cabinet meeting today was the budget. I got an update from our budget director. And uh, right now, the numbers look like we have a very thin margin of possible surplus. Of course, we still have a long way to go. We're talking most likely less than 1% of, much less than 1% of a surplus. It's a very, very close number. So we've given directions to our cabinet to watch their spending very closely. And we're also going to be looking at the revenue coming in, which our revenue secretary will also be looking at. We are concerned in almost every one of the departments during their first uh, several days in office regarding uh, just getting basic budget information uh, from um, the current leaders of these departments. Uh, many of the departments do not have monthly budget reports regarding the progress of what their current budget looks like regarding year-end progress and month-to-month -month progress. This, of course, causes me concern as the chief operating officer also of the state of North Carolina that we are having difficulty projecting future expenditures when many of the departments don't seem to have their hands on their monthly budgets uh, regarding operations. This is um, something we did not anticipate um, uh, having this issue with our new cabinet secretaries, but it's no doubt they're seeing it. Uh, the fifth issue I'm not going to talk in much detail on, but there are some immediate security issues in several areas that we've got to deal with, and I've asked my public safety um, uh, 
secretary to deal with some security issues. Um, the sixth issue is, uh, and I will say David Hoyle, the previous revenue secretary, did warn me of this when I talked to him, is that uh, our, our uh, cash flow crunch continues. Uh, they had that problem last year regarding refunds for uh, tax purposes, and uh, we continue to be very concerned about the revenue flow, especially between now and May. And uh, my budget director and my whole cabinet have been directed to be, be very conservative in what expenditures are being made, especially so we do not get caught up in a cash flow situation between now and the time when these refunds are going to be given. I do have some good news uh, regarding some things that I'm very pleased to hear. Um, as I said in a previous press conference, Bobby <coughs> Jendell, the mayor of uh, Louisiana, said one thing you have to be immediately concerned about when you come in at office is emergency operations. And Karen Shanahan gave a very positive report that our emergency operations are in sound conditions. Uh, they have a very good procedures in place. There's even an old videotape of both Governor Purdue and Governor Hunt giving training on this. And we're very pleased to see that our emergency operations is in good shape. And Secretary Shanahan has uh, already met with the other cabinet secretaries this morning to ensure that they're trained. In fact, we're going to be planning a uh, tabletop exercise for my entire team probably sometime in February to ensure that um, they'll know what to do in each of the uh, areas. So um, that's where we are right now. And I could spend another half hour on the very, very productive and uh, uh, as Sharon Decker said in the meeting, um, who's a great friend and colleague, she said, we see all of these problems as opportunities also to fix things. But we're going to have to move quickly and we're going to have to be very innovative to try to, to try to fix some of these immediate operational issues. So as we're planning to try to initiate new policy, probably one of our initial goals is just to keep the operations of state government sound and in place and serving our, our constituents and our customers. Um, I'm real excited here to make three additional appointments who will be working with me and my chief of staff. In fact, come on up here. I want you to stand up here with us uh, since you'll be working directly with these people. Thomas Stiff, my chief of staff, who has been doing an outstanding job. I, I, I couldn't have made a better selection. But today I'm pleased to announce that Tony Almeida, to my left, will serve as my senior advisor for jobs and the economy and will be working very closely with Sharon Decker, the Secretary of Commerce in looking at jobs and economy uh, policy needs and even look at organizational structure needs with regards to commerce and other departments. Uh, Tony will be working very closely with me in the old Capitol building and um, he's going to be my right hand person in also making some of the uh, contacts with uh, clients that are interested in North Carolina which will be coordinated by both Tony and Sharon Decker. I'm also pleased to announce that Fred Steen to my left person from Rowan County. That area will serve as my legislative liaison. And I'll talk about Fred in just a few minutes. And let me tell you, the, probably the most important job right now in the administration is going to be this guy to my right, um, based upon what I've already said. Uh, Chris Estes will serve as the Director of Office of Information Technology Services. So this is the person who's going to have to deal with many of these immediate IS issues. He's been working actually with us during the transition for several weeks, um, leading that effort and been working very closely with the uh, Revenue Secretary especially and also the Department of Health and Human Services Secretary. He did such a good job. I said, we need you. <laughs> we need you, Chris. So he's willing to move here and have an apartment here at least, and uh, I'll be talking about him. First, Tony, come on up. I want to say a few things about you. Uh, this, is, this is another uh, opportunity to introduce another former boss of mine. Uh, Tony and I actually came to Duke Energy uh, within six months of each other. He was a good Vanderbilt graduate. He came to Duke Power, and uh, he's agreed to be my chief advisor on jobs and the economy. He, is, he had 32 years of management experience at Duke, uh, where he was also vice president of economic development. I also want to say that uh, during that tenure, he was also uh, the operations manager of the 24-hour answering service, customer service answering service, which is another thing I'm trying to really uh, integrate into state government. In fact, his predecessor in that job was Sharon Decker. So he and Sharon will again be putting that team together. 
and uh, I'm very, very lucky to have Tony. Um, he was also a very integral part when he was Vice President of Economic Development in developing the vision and strategy that resulted, resulted in Apple, Google, and Facebook data centers being recruited in North Carolina. He had a great relationship with the previous Secretary of Commerce, too, and we continue to pick his brain for ideas and, and uh, help. He has extensive experience working with state, regional, and local governments to implement large developmental projects and recruit businesses to the state. He knows the state, the entire state, extremely well. Um, as mayor, he would often set up meetings with me with economic development groups from the east, from the Piedmont to the west. And I remember giving them many tours of the city of Charlotte, which you helped lead. As my senior advisor for jobs in the economy, Tony will counsel me on all aspects of economic development including the retention and expansion of industry in North Carolina. And I expect, I expect some very innovative thinking from him and Sharon Decker in this effort. I want to thank him for agreeing to serve and also thank his wife, Margaret, who's not here today. She's back home in Salisbury uh, for allowing him to come and work in Raleigh. Y'all give Tony Almeida a round of applause. Thank you very much. I'm very proud to announce Fred Steen will be my chief liaison to the General Assembly. He brings extensive hands-on experience to the job, having served the people of District 76 in the North Carolina House of Representatives since 2004. He was chairman of the House Committee on Public Utilities and vice chairman of Commerce and Development. Fred has also served on many study committee, committees, including Energy Independence, the Blue Ribbon Commission on Transitions to Community Living, Select House Committee on Public-Private Partnership, and the Legislative Research Commission on the Third-Party Sale of Electricity. He has walked not, worked not just with the House, but during the past two years on these committees. He's also worked with many uh, Senate members, including some very influential Senate committee chairmen, uh, which we need to work closely with. Uh, I'm also proud to say that his really big job was he was mayor of Landis, North Carolina, and he was reelected five times to that job. And Landis, a good town. I used to referee Little League football there in Landis and was called many names while doing it. He, and high school basketball in Landis. He will be my administrative's uh, chief representative to all members of the General Assembly on both sides of the aisle and will build strategic partnerships with lawmakers to implement my agenda. I'd really like to thank Fred, but more than anything, I'd like to thank Tina. Tina, raise your hand. It's great having you here. Welcome back to Raleigh. And you thought you had a break from the legislative, but you're back. So uh, y'all give uh, Fred a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, again, the most important job right now, and that's with all due respect to all my cabinet members and Thomas, even you, buddy. This is the guy we need right now. Uh, Chris Estes will uh, lead the Office of Information Technology Services. Um, it is clear that we have to modernize and digitize state government. Chris was most recently was principal of Booz Allen Hamilton, a leading strategy and technology, technology consulting firm. He previously served as business development manager at Price Waterhouse Coopers before joining IBM after his acquisition of the company in 2004. During his career, Chris has helped some of the largest companies digitize their customer experience but most importantly, he was a proven change agent within organizations, and that is something that is desperately needed in the state government. I'd like to thank uh, he and his wife, Sheila, for agreeing. Sheila, raise your hand. It's great to have you here. Um, they're doing a long commute, and uh, I really appreciate you making the sacrifice for you and your family. Again, this is extremely important, and he's going to be spending a lot of time with the cabinet secretaries. One issue we are also finding out in areas of legal, information systems um, and finance chief operating officers that's our greatest challenge right now in hiring for our departments is getting some really solid people in information systems legal and uh, chief operating officers and finance budget people so um, i want to communicate to uh, the public at hand in north carolina and across the nation if you're looking for a great job in state government for a short period of time to fix things uh, we need you um, and each of my uh, cabinet secretaries are on the prowl to look for some high talent in each of those areas. Uh, 